Hey guys, Liam here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pewter signet ring like the one I'm showing you here. Now, I did 3D print the initial model, but, you know, if you want to make this yourself, uh, f you know, 3D printers are incredibly cheap these days, and they're really common in makerspaces, and you can even find some libraries and stuff with them. Now, I will say one thing, that the um, actual quality of the casting is hugely dependent on the um, the model itself, so I didn't expect this, and I just basically made draft models and thought I'd have to do the finishing work. But yeah, definitely print in the highest settings you can. Here is another one that came out of the uh, uh, the casting, basically in you know, and you can see some of the lines on the side with uh, where basically the print wasn't high enough quality. Here's just the spout as well. That's what I was showing you. But yeah, if you look on the side, you can sort of see some of the um, lines from the 3D print. So definitely print at much higher, you know, resolution than I was using. I think this is 0 0.3. Then to clean them up once I'd finished with the casting, I basically just used some small needle files. I used the, you know, flat one, a round one, and a half round. The others I didn't use so much, but yeah, basically just use them. I like use any files. Um, I would say putting it in a vise is probably a lot easier. But holding it in your hands is quite small, quite hard to manipulate. Um, but I also use printed some of these like little sanding sticks. These are brilliant. These are really good for um, finishing up and just getting overall, you know, like a good finish on it. I also use a Dremel at the end to polish it a little bit with just a little cotton mop. But yeah, these definitely recommend these. But you could just use a normal stick and some sandpaper. Once the model is done, as you can see here, here's the models I actually used there. Now they're much better than the ones I showed you just a minute ago. But um, yeah, they're still not perfect. There's a few things that I should have fixed, but I didn't think it would have that much of an effect on the casting. I thought it'd be a bit more um, like porous and I'd have to sand it down anyway. But yeah, so this next step will be preparing them for the mold. So <laughs> to do this, I actually used the wax from a baby bell. Now, bear with me, it's actually quite useful for this because it was really easy to get a hold of. I mean, you could use paraffin, but it's also really easy to model with your hands, which, you know, normal paraffin wax isn't so much. So, yeah, just uh, chom down on a few baby bells. I also did beef up the backs of the models a little bit with some of the wax, which uh, looking back on it now and how the, the um, castings came out, honestly, this really isn't a necessary step. I thought it'd be a little more useful than it was, but it basically just meant I had to do more finishing work. But I just felt the model, the back was a little thin, so I thought I'd just beef it up and then sanding it down would be easy enough, which it was, it just took a bit more time. So what you want to do then is you want to make a little sort of triangular shape with the wax. Yep, definitely doing it perfectly on camera. Just, you know, just so you can see. But you get the idea. Work it into like a little, you know, nub. Shape that. And um, working it on a mat like this is quite good because then you can get it quite flat as well. Make sure it's like, you know, pointing up. And then you'll want to attach the ring to the little sprue. I guess I call it a sprue. Once you're happy with how the wax and the sprue looks, what you're going to do is you want to get a small amount of plaster of Paris. Um, I put it in a shot glass because it was easy enough to move, and I used a cotton swab. Now you're going to want to mix this with water so it's a nice light slurry, and you're going to want to mix it really well, make sure there's no lumps, because any of that will, could you know, affect the final casting. So mix it up as well as you can, and then you're going to want to you know, apply a thin coat to the outside of the model with all the fine details, you know, getting that slurry in there and making sure it's, you know, that's one of the benefits of, of doing it this way is you can preserve really fine details as you've seen with, the, you know, the lines. Once you've made sure that's, that the mixture is really well mixed up, you're going to want to start applying a really thin coat to the outside of the model. Make sure you get as much in the fine details as you can. You're sort of dabbing it on lightly and uh, trying to cover every fine detail with, you know, the smoother, make sure there's no lumps in it sort of thing.
once you've gone over the finer details it's time to start mixing and applying it to every you know the whole model so i put quite a bit around the bottom of the sprue to try and you know this, this will basically form a little hard shell once it's dried so you want a thin coating because also you know when you plaster paris is uh, liquid it, it does warm up a little bit so when you if you want as much working time as possible as well use really really cold water and that will give you as long as possible whilst you know working with it that's probably more important in this step than the second one because the second one's relatively easy so yeah this one's the more important for the casting so just apply it a, you know a, a few millimeters across the whole model and then it'll be ready for the next step once it's dried once you've finished applying the plaster paris to your model or models basically you're going to leave it on the side to dry until it's nice and hard and you can move on to the next step now for the next part i took you know a, a cheap energy drink can and i cut it in half at first i measured to see how much i need for the model to be inside also if you do use a can take into account the um the round bit on the bottom because you know it adds a few millimeters so i just be aware of that but yeah i used a, a knife just to cut the way through just be careful you don't cut yourself if you do this you could always use like a, a cardboard tube that'd work pretty well just you know put it on some card and hot glue around the bottom and that would work just as well i'd have a hot glue gun but i can imagine that would definitely be <laughs> a slightly easier way than just you know mangling a can once you've prepared the you know vessel for the model and the mold what you're going to want to do is basically measure the amount of water that can fit in your container this may be more difficult if you do use cardboard but the reason i did this was because my mixture said to use a two to one ratio of plaster to water of by weight for the mix itself now that means roughly i need 120 grams of plaster for this one but this this you know you, your your plaster paris may vary so just just check that you know you're mixing it right if you do need to mix it a little thinner um that's you know you can do that It'll, it shouldn't affect it because it's relatively low temperature casting um but yeah i would definitely recommend using cold water as well because it gives you the longest uh you know work time also be careful with you know mixing this and, and the powder because it's probably not the best stuff to breathe in and do it in somewhere where you can clean up easily don't do it anywhere you don't want to make a mess then you're going to need to give it a, a really good mix now i was using a, a cotton bud again because i seem to just love using them i don't know why i need to get some lollipops or something but yeah give it a really good mix and then put it into the mold I did actually shove a metal skewer through the wax as well, just so I could hold it in place whilst I was pouring it in, and I didn't have to worry too much about it. As you can see, my mixture is very, very lumpy, which isn't good because I was using a Q-tip. But if you coated the outside of the model, like I showed you, this you know limits the effect. Also, <laughs> you might want to wipe that off too. This next step, while isn't directly necessary because of the coating, I thought it was a pretty good method. I basically just used an old electric toothbrush to vibrate the plaster of Paris to, you know, settle out any bubbles and, you know, just try and make the mold as good as possible for casting. And then after your models have fully set, this may take a couple of days. I gave it two days just to be sure. I put them in the oven. Uh, basically like I started off really low ramping it up slowly over a few hours but I don't think this is necessary you could literally just put them in the oven at, you know 250 degrees and then make sure there's something underneath if you put them upside down like I do I mean you'll need to if you want to do it this way because you'll drip it out slowly but yeah just put them in the oven and then over a few hours the wax and the PLA which is what I printed with will melt out once the wax has and the plastic has melted out you'll want to start heating up the pewter now basically the way you'll do this is i oh, just use a little cast iron pan um just chucked it in and put it on the hob and it started melting now it's it 
pewter's got a really low thermal conductivity, so it does take a while to melt. But once it starts going, it's pretty quick after that. Next, you're going to want to take the moulds out of the oven. I just use some tongs. They're not really hot. They're only like 200 degrees, which you don't want to touch. But yeah, just be careful. And then I poured the pewter in. I poured a little too much. Um, I definitely advise pouring just the right amount. And then with some of the excess pewter, I actually decided to use one of these silicone like ice molds. And uh, just because I wanted some more easily castable little nuggets so I could like use, you know, a metal spoon instead of having to use a cast iron pan every time. So I just basically chuck that in. Um, this silicone isn't heat proof, but it does work. Probably wouldn't like casting too many times. Um, and you probably wouldn't want to use it after, although this pewter is non-toxic. Probably should have mentioned that. Make sure your pewter doesn't contain any lead if you intend on wearing it, obviously. After this, I let them cool down for 10 minutes and then drop them in some water. Um, and then I sort of started breaking them out. I probably should have left them a little longer rather than playing around. But yeah, broke them out of there. I didn't film that as it was a bit of a fiddle. But as you can see, they look pretty good. They have this weird gold color as well. Um, I gave them a little wash in some soapy water and then moved on to the tram to, with the uh, wire wheel, just to give them a little bit of a clean. Also, the pewter didn't actually take that long. Cool, we'll have some little pellets. So after a quick wire wheeling with the Dremel, and just a little bit of uh, filing. This is where we are now. Um, I've not finished this one yet. I've probably spent about 10 minutes on it. It'll probably take me you know, a little bit longer, not too long. Um, and yeah, here is the other one just before I finished it. Now, I will say that this, these came out an awful lot better than I expected. I really didn't expect them to work this well, but I'm very pleased with it. There's a few things I could do to clean it up better by hand. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this product. If you like the video, guys, Hit that sub button and, you know, cry me a river.